And it's this big shakeup of the benefit system. You know, we want to get people back to the office. No more laying about. And a lot of these people that they're talking about, you know, incentivizing back to work are going to be on what? Exactly. They're going to be on incapacity benefit, right? Or temporary sick leave. Interestingly, parliamentary secretaries who were signed off on temporary sick leave, they, they don't seem to be getting incentivized back to work, do they? To appear at the bloody COVID inquiry. No, 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 that, that's fine. Oh, if you're not feeling well, if you're not feeling well, no, it's fine. There's no rush. You just, yeah, just rest up. Come back when you're feeling better, when it's all blown over. But anyway, I digress. But yeah, Tory psyche wise, do you ever th like think to yourself, well, OK, right. You want people, you, sorry, you don't want people laying about doing nothing. Right. That's what you say. And here you have a million parents desperate to get back to work. All they need is a few more hours of government subsidised childcare and nursery cover or cover for the school holidays or regulations so that employers have to offer them work from home. So if they're in an office based role, like they can just work from the kitchen thing and keep an eye on their kids. They don't want to be sat at home doing nothing. And yet the Tory psyche, that Tory mean spiritedness then it kind of kicks in, doesn't it? It's like, you you, you stay at home. You stay at home. You're getting no help from me. Absolutely none. Well, I I thought you didn't want lazy people just, you know, laying around doing nothing. Well, uh, we don't. Well, could you uh, could, could you sort me some childcare out then? Uh, no. Right, so, so I'm confused. Uh, you do want me just sitting at home drinking in doll money, do you? Uh, no, I, I don't recall saying that. Right, I mean, it's, it's just very confusing because, you know, I'm here I am, I'm, I'm a single mother. I, I mean, it might not sound like it. <laughs> Should have done this bit with a, a higher pitched voice, shouldn't I? But, uh, you know, I'm a single mother. You know, you don't, you don't want me scrounging. Um, half your schoolmates write very disparaging columns about me. Um, here I am trying to get out and get back to work, which you say you want me to do, but you're not going to chip in a few quid to make sure that I can earn triple that, which you could then tax. And then I would go and spend it in the shops or online. And I would not be pulling down universal credit as well. I'll tell you what you can pull down. You can pull down my pants and suck me off, you filthy fucking poverty. All right, that's... Uh... <laughs> that was an... That was the last bit was unnecessary, I feel. I feel like I was nailing the point sufficiently without descending to such lewd uh, exaggeration comedic devising or whatever anyway look it's it's I, I guess the point is that it's like they they really don't want single parents living off the state right but at the same time they kind of do want single parents living off the state quite obviously you know because it gives them that that enemy this is what i mean it's like a tory psyche thing it gives them an enemy it's fascinating you know, they need that feeling of superiority and snootiness, don't they? Because it's their whole identity. If you took that away from them, who would they even be? They may even be nice if you took that away. You know, but it's, that, it's that mentality where they're like, oh, God, bloody, you know, single parents living off the state. Oh, what, what a drain they are. Oh! Like that sort of snootiness, that bitchiness. They like having that enemy. And you know that that's their vibe. You know that that is actually the mentality that they have. Because, right, here's, here's another thing to Google, right? There was a report out last year. They found that if they funded socialised childcare for kids from the ages of 0 to 11, they would get a return of £13 billion. <laughs> that they're just chucking in the bin. Like, morally, it's outrageous, but even economically, fiscally, it's just... What are you doing? It's like, don't you think, like, shouldn't we try and look at ways to generate profit and, you know, sort the GDP out? This this could be part of that. What possible reason could you have for... No, no, you don't, you don't, no, you're not going to get it. <laughs> I thought you said every penny was precious and money's tight and you want to pay down the deficit. Right, yes, I did, I did say all of that. But unfortunately for you, Aid, what, what is it? What possible reason? could you have for saying, well, you forgot to factor in that feeling snooty and classist and judgmental and enjoying hating single mothers 
is a feeling that is simply worth more than 13 billion pounds. I mean, it really feels, it feels f incredible, Ed. You, you should try it sometime. It is, it feels better than the illegal antisocial scourge of NOS canisters. It really, it's hard to believe. I was as shocked as you are. But it is in, an incredible thing. It's like having my own personal fentanyl. Honestly, hey, like whenever I'm feeling down, you know, like what maybe one of my best friends has been caught trying to sexually harass somebody or somebody else has been caught up in a lobbying scandal or something, I just look out the window at an exhausted single mother of two on a council estate, somebody that I could help, that it would make moral and economic sense to help. But instead, I just look at her and I go, ooh, look at her. And her. I'm so much better than her and her hard, bloody life. Oh, that's a lovely hit of endorphins that I'm getting right now. Oh, my goodness. This feeling should be illegal. It is a $13 billion feeling. It's basically a drug. And it, it, and it, it, it makes me laugh more than laughing gas. <laughs>